Okay, let's talk about how to evaluate uh, the exponential function e to the x on a calculator. So any scientific calculator, like the ones I've got pictured here, or any graphing calculator, like the ones I've got pictured here, will be able to evaluate this for you. Very often, the function to evaluate e to the x is the second or shifted function for the button labeled LN. So if you can find on your calculator a button that says LN, and then look right above that, that's where you might find e to the x. Now I have seen calculators that have e to the x right on one of the buttons, but on many of the most common models, it's above the LN button because it is the inverse of the LN function that we'll be talking about another day. So you would push like the second button and then the button that has e to the x right above it to use that function. On a graphing calculator like a TI-83 or TI-84, it's also above the LN button. So if you find the LN button right above it, it says e to the x. So if you press second and then that button with e to the x above it, that's how you would get that. So let's try this out. Let's evaluate e to the 5.1. If you've got your calculator handy, try doing this and making sure that you get the same thing I do. So I'm pushing second LN, and it does show up as e to the, I'm putting in 5.1, and it shows up as 164. 0219073, so 164.02 approximately. And now let's try e to the negative 3.2. You should get 0 0.04076220204, so about 0.04 as the value of e to the negative 3.2. Now, remember when I was talking about some of the properties of exponential functions, and I said one of the properties was that they are one-to-one. -one. So that means that for any particular a other than one itself, as long as a is either greater than one or less than one, but still positive, a to the x is equal to a to the y, if and only if x equals y. In other words, the only way that you can raise a to one power and have it equal to that same number to a different power is if the powers really aren't different. They really are the same thing. So for example, if 13 to the x equals 13 to the 9, the only way that can happen is if x equals 9. So the only solution to this equation, the only thing x can be, is 9. How about if e to the 2x minus 5 equals e to the 7? So by that one-to-one -one property, the 2x minus 5 has to equal 7. The exponent, if, if the e's are the same, the exponents have to be the same. So 2x minus 5 has to equal 7. Therefore, 2x has to equal 12 after we add 5 to both sides. And then divide both sides by 2, x has to equal 6. So the solution to this equation is x is 6. How about this? 6 to the x minus 5 power equals 36. Now, 36 is a power of 6. 36 is 6 to the 2 power. So we've got 6 to the x minus 5 power on one side of the equal sign and 6 to the 2 power on the other side. And the only way those can be equal is if x minus 5 equals 2. And from there, add 5 to both sides, x equals 7.
Now an example of evaluating an exponential function. Here it says the function d of h equals 5 times e to the negative 0.4 h can be used to find the number of milligrams, d, of a certain drug that is in a patient's bloodstream h hours after the drug has been administered. So the number you plug in for h is the number of hours it's been since the drug was administered. And the number you get out for d of h is the number of milligrams of the drug that's still present. So how many milligrams will be present after one hour? That means we're plugging one in for h. d of one would be five times e to the negative 0.4 times one. And let me show you how that looks on the calculator. We're taking five times e to the, in parentheses, negative 0 0.4 times 1, close parentheses, and that's about 3.35. It's actually 3.35160023, but about 3.35. And what about after six hours? If we plug in six for h, we're evaluating five times e to the, in parentheses, negative 0 0.4 times 6, close parentheses. That shows up on the calculator as 0.453589 and so on. So if we round to a couple places after the decimal point, it's about 0 0.45. So after six hours, there's less of the drug left in the bloodstream than after one hour. That makes sense that over time, the, the drug would get less and less. After it's, right after it's been administered is when the, the concentration might be the highest. And then over time, it gets lower and lower. Okay, that seems like a good stopping place for the end of this video. And then I'll come back to another part and we will talk about one of the big applications of exponents and exponential functions, and that is in calculating compound interest, where interest is compounded maybe yearly, maybe monthly, maybe daily, maybe a certain number of times per year, maybe continuously. We'll talk about how that works in the next video.